Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm going to get into a whole thing about this Joe Biden, Donald Trump debate, which I'm kind of looking forward to. I mean, you know, anytime there's something that level of apocalyptic, <laughs> apocalyptic, um, you know, I don't know because they both suck and there's no point to the election, um, which I'll get into in a bit. But Joe Biden gave a four, 13 second challenge to Trump. Um, look at this clueless m and So we're going to get into all that first. But first I want to talk about the chosen ones. The chosen ones. So somebody sent me a video about the chosen ones. And, you know, it's just the wrong way to think about spirituality. Um, seven powers God gives the chosen ones. Seven reasons why it's being a chosen one is extremely difficult. Your level of intelligence is unmatched if you're a chosen one. Seven types of chosen ones and their divine purposes. Chosen ones, eight reasons why people hate you. Your chosen ones got haters. And so there's all these videos about the chosen ones. And it doesn't mean Jewish people. This is a new age um, term. Let me go through a few video clips here. Seven types of chosen ones and their divine purposes. In many spiritual traditions and belief systems, the concept of the chosen one is prevalent. So this is a professional voiceover person um, putting out this video. The topic is going to be chosen ones. You are unmatched. Yes, sir. Let me say it louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family, chosen ones, you are unmatched, okay? And that says intelligence level. It simply means that there's not too many people on your level, all right? It is not too many people who are thinking the way that you think. It okay, so their intelligence level, you're unmatched, you chosen ones. This one, chosen ones, you're not like the rest. What makes you different from the rest? Living in a world that everybody wants to be the same, everybody competing to be the same, what makes you so different? Oh. You're a chosen one. That's what makes you different. These four angels will wait for 144,000 chosen ones. Eatering on a delicate balance, controlled by four powerful celestial beings. Boom, the chosen ones. They got the four powerful celestial beings are watching over you, chosen ones. Chosen ones. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Chosen ones. <laughs> um, this one has some kind of Illuminati thing. Chosen ones, seven powers God gives you. Are miracles a common part of your day? Almost as. I just, I just did four of them. Like yesterday, I did four of them. Tomorrow, I'm going to do eight. You know, so yeah, they're pretty common. I just, I just did one right now when you guys weren't even looking. As if you're guided by a higher force. I am guided by a higher force. To be a chosen one means you are endowed with divine empowerment. Empowerment. I think I have divine empowerment. You know, I was saying that the other day. I think I'm endowed with divine empowerment. I'm well endowed with divine empowerment. I'm well endowed with divine empowerment. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm a chosen one. The divine empowerment. Okay, so um, I felt like this should I should address this. You know, there's this idea of indigo children and crystal children in the um, New Age community, but it's mentioned in the Whispers of the Brighter World messages that are part of the Sajmark system. And the difference here is, you know, this idea of chosen ones, that there are children of destiny, and you're destined to be this, whatever it is, right? These higher spiritual beings. But there's lots of ego in that, right? Referring to yourself as a chosen one and thinking of yourself as a chosen one. You know, LeBron James had a tattoo on his back that said chosen one. And, you know, a person of destiny. These are just samskaras. Like any kind of de destiny you have are things that are a part of your samskaric structure, right? But we're talking about here is spiritual talent. And for there to be some sort of spiritual revolution, there has to be well, I don't want to say older souls because all souls are the same age but it's your approach to the divine like how close you are to divinity like where you are in your spiritual journey because people are at different places you know I was talking about this 
in recent videos. Everyone's on a different level spiritually and what you're born into. So some people have more talent than other people in that area, right? Like you just see, have, you can see areas of your life where you have more talent than members of your family or people in your life than other people in some area of your life, right? And spirituality is a part of that. And people with spiritual talent and have had, you know, some level of uh, exposure to, you know, past lives of meditation. And, I, you know, somebody asked me about past lives and I constantly get asked that question. I talk about it all the time, right? If you've had a, if you have a future life, which is in heaven, Jesus believed in past lives. People of that area at that time believed in past lives and future lives. Because if you believe in a soul, you have to have past lives, right? The only way there's no past lives is there is no soul. But if you have to, have, if you have a soul, that means that this life that you're living is only a part of your soul's life. Your soul is created at the, the moment the universe was created. There is a creation moment. The universe came into being, right? And all the soul energy was there at the beginning. And all the soul energy will be there at the end. And so that's whatever, you know, quadrillions of years or whatever it is. It's lots of years. Time, you know, there's lots of time. You know, uh, time is almost infinite in our ability, our capacity to think about it. And our lives are short. So you have a 70-year life as a person, but your soul is here for infinity, you know, for the whole life of the universe. And so your soul is infinite and your, and your individual ego and your person, you know, your person, uh, your, who you are as a person is, you know, 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, right? Even when people live, there's times that people live for 10,000 years. Even then, that's a short period of span compared to, you know, a billion or a trillion, right? And so, um, you know, you, you have, your soul had an existence before this life that you're living now. And it's going to have an existence after this life. And more than likely, it's going to be back here on planet Earth because most people don't solve this equation, right? This is a, a test or a, it's like a video game, right? You've got you to gotta win the game. You have to, you have to solve the, the puzzle, right? You have to you know, do the things you need to gain liberation, to gain freedom from this earthly bondage where you no longer have, are bound to planet Earth. You have to graduate spiritually from this planet, and very few people do, right? And so there is different levels of spiritual talent, spiritual experience, you know, in terms of people who have had more past lives. There's lots of people, this is their first life as a human being. And then there are higher developed beings that come from a, you know, a, a, you know, a more advanced divine, uh, you know, beyond the planet Earth. They're, n they're not bound to planet Earth. They're coming down just to do service. And so for a transformation to be taking place, which I believe there is, you know, we're, we're at the end of this materialism, the end of the Kali Yuga, the end of the, the age of iron, right? It's a low level age, very materialistic, very heavy, you know, lots of, uh, you know, more primitive souls in a sense, more lower developed souls, you know, people who don't have the ability for abstract thought, you know, these people that are coming in maybe in a past life, they were, you know, they were recently, a you know, in the animal kingdom of some sort, right? They were a dog or a cow or something, you know, something that was uh, around human beings in a past life service oriented animal or something like that. And then they graduate up to being a human, but they're not, you know, ready for higher developed concepts and things because your first life as a human is a, is a huge jump in the, you know, the transmigration of the soul. Your soul is... Uh, uh, moving up to a, the next level, right? Your soul through material experience on planet Earth can gain knowledge and, and get closer to God and, you know, uh, become more, uh, you know, become more self-actualized. Like your soul is learning about its divine nature, right? Because you were created by the divine source, by the, you know, the divine creator, right? You're created by the essence of love, which is, you know, your spiritual, the spiritual part of your, of your true essence, right? And as you move through this experience of that through the material life, because the material life brings, you know, some sort of, um, you know, tangible physically uh, experiences where there's emotion and there's, you know, desire and there's, you know, all these things that um, cloud your spiritual judgment, right? It makes it 
where it's a like going into a video game where there's some kind of um you know things that stimulate you and, and draw you away from your true path in your journey right and so it makes it harder when you have senses and you can have freedom of choice and you can indulge in things and you can be lured off the spiritual path it makes it where you know as an etheric being you don't have those things because you don't have a physical body you don't experience pleasure and desire and things the same way you don't have an ego you don't have these things that are you know that are um are lures away from doing what you're supposed to do right you you go on these misadventures you make mistakes you you veer from the path right and so that's what makes a third dimensional uh reality such a you know uh where you can make large leaps in your spiritual development right because it's not easy to stay on your path and be disciplined and not be lured away by all the you know wonderful things that are there in the world that are there you know it's distractions to your true purpose right and then the fears and all the things and the corruption and all the things that you know pollute this planet but those of us who can kind of see that this system that we now are 100 percent dependent on the material system is ending then what like do we go back to caveman level do we you know de-evolve into something less than right or is there a chance that we can go to a higher level because in the history of human beings there have been saints there have been higher developed spiritual beings there have been spiritual masters there have been people who have cracked the code and so if they can do that it opens the door for other people to do that right and for that to happen there has to be a like a reduction of population of all the negative souls all the souls that are not working on their spiritual journey and lower developed souls there has to be you know uh there has to be like a depopulation of those types of beings and there has to be an influx of higher developed souls that come in who are either you know have worked assiduously at being uh spiritual have worked you know in past lives and have uh you know accumulated spiritual capital or divine divine beings that are beyond that level and they're coming in to incarnate to help facilitate this change and elevate the human population but the term chosen one is completely misleading it's egotistical and it's just wrong <laughs> because if you are somebody who is here to elevate the human population right if you're you're here to um serve god and help you know right this ship that's gone in the wrong direction you know humanity is on on the precipice of of uh uh, destroying itself and the planet right human beings are flirting with disaster there, there's insanity mass insanity and complete unnatural behaviors and moral breakdown we see it all around us and so with all those things there has to be a solution there has to be a contingency plan if there is a god you know there's a plan if there's a plan there has to be contingencies for freedom of choice gone wrong like we have the ability for freedom of choice and we, when, we muse, when we misuse this freedom of choice and we go wayward, you know, we go off script, we, leave, we go off the farm. When our egos hijack our purpose and, we, you know, we go rogue, our egos go rogue, which has happened collectively, this is what happens to the planet, right? It goes into, you know, this type of depravity and level of uh, moral breakdown. But we do have freedom of choice. And if you have freedom of choice, there is no chosen ones because you have choices to make no matter what level you're on everybody has choices to make and you have to make a choice towards service you have to negate some of your you know lower level tendencies or all of them and you have to fight off the you know the depravity of the system and rise to a higher level and you need a spiritual system you know that's the sajmar meditation i talk about where there's a divine transmission and a cleaning of your past impressions or some scars and a transmission that's given to elevate your spiritual self right to empower your spiritual self and again empower is a horrible word i just heard it <laughs> like i dislike the word empower so forget i said that but is to um you know fortify or to you know give strength to your soul is subtle right your soul is you know is humble and your soul is um without you know aggressiveness and your ego is aggressive so your ego is hijacking your soul's purpose You're, you came in with a soul plan and a soul purpose 
and then your ego hijacks that right there's always this i don't want to call it a battle because the ego isn't uh the soul isn't aggressive you know the soul is you know is uh the best part of you right but your ego is you know activated and so your ego is going to you know overwhelm your soul and, and make decisions and so your ego has to be tamed and has to be brought along and work with the soul to call it a battle is like not a good you know when people think about the, a demon on one side and a an angel on the other one one shoulder a demon and a, on the other shoulder an angel and so after just lifetimes of failures and making the wrong choices there should be some level of you know all right this isn't working out and just uh you know, you, you lose interest in all the depravity. And you're like, that's not it. And you experience these things, and then eventually your ego submits to your soul after, you know, going about the uh, the wrong choices in life for so many lives or whatever it is. So what I'm saying here is there's no chosen ones because nothing's guaranteed. That implies that you've been chosen and there's no chance of falling. You know, I've just seen this with somebody who's, uh, somebody who was spiritually evolved in the in Kamlesh Patel, the master of the the you know what now is called heartfulness that used to be Saj Mark's system of meditation. I do, and he was somebody who had spiritual talent and spiritual el evol uh, evolution, and he's just folded like a card house. There's been lots of cases that higher developed beings, even Jesus, had a spiritual fall at the end of their lives, right? some sense of you know god why, why hast thou why hath thou forsaken me when jesus was on the cross right because you know his all his people turned on him his disciples and all his followers turned on him and you know there's reasons for that and you get lured away there's been lots of saints and higher developed souls that reached a high level of spirituality and they lost their way because freedom of choice and the pull of the you know materialistic system is pretty um you know overwhelming right which we all should know and so you know it happens to the best of us the highest developed soul so there's no sense of a chosen one there's no sense of any chosen people chosen whatever we choose right we make a choice to uh you know forego our ego egotistical desires and serve god and it's a selfless you know there's no aggrandizement there's no Oh, I'm a chosen one. There's not these kind of things, right? There's just you being the best uh, version of yourself and embracing your higher nature, which human beings are not good at. Like it's easy to do, because it's it's a uh, you know it's something that is there for you to do, like for everyone to do. It's easy for us to do, but we don't want want it, right? We don't choose it. There's a pathway, a divine pathway for us to do it, but we don't you know we don't choose to do it. So there are, in a sense, these two types of souls, or in terms of your incarnation, there's what's called avatars. And these are higher developed souls that come down for one specific purpose. And once they execute that purpose, they they die. Like they just want, you know, they come down, they do some work, and they die. And they're not evolving here. It's not a part of their spiritual evolution other than doing this act of service. And so people think of Jesus as an avatar, but he wasn't. Krishna was an avatar. Krishna was a, a soul that was, um, you know, that was Vishnu, the, the, you know, cosmic functionary of preservation. You know, there's Brahma, the, the, there's a spirit behind all these things, right? There's a spirit behind the sun. There's a soul energy in everything, right? There's a, a spiritual essence, just like when you're looking at a computer program, there's, there's code you know what you're looking at in terms of this video isn't is an illusion because there's a code that's creating the the image on your screen right it's not my voice isn't even my real voice right it's a it's a digital copy of my voice that's you know encoded into this video right so there's like there's always something like that like the cyber world is like a you know like a, a knockoff of our third dimensional reality and our third dimensional reality is an illusion of spiritual energy manifesting in physical form and so there's a code to it right and there's spirit behind everything so there's a spirit behind the essence of creation there's a spirit behind the essence of preservation there's a spirit behind the essence of destruction and krishna was an incarnation of the spirit behind preservation but krishna came down to bring in the mahabharata 
or to, through the Mahabharata bring in the was you know the Kali Yuga was the end of a, a phase or a period, and the Kali Yuga is like the worst one, right? It's the it's the most depraved one, and that's ending fairly soon. It's a you know, it's a time period that's marked by you know materialism and you know it's a heavy period of time where it's hard to be a spiritual person, and people live shorter lives of intensity and you know a depravity and things. And so there are some beings that come in as avatars, but they have a specific service. They come and they go. And the rest of us, we have to evolve. No matter what talent you have and what your you know, supposed destiny is, you have to make those choices. You have to work at it. And you have to commit to it, right? And so the coming in with this idea that you're chosen is, is, a, is a bad idea. Because the immense work that you have to do to fight off the heaviness of the spirit of the material world and embrace your spiritual side is there's not too many success stories in the, for human beings to do that because it's really hard it's really hard in this you know the Kali Yuga and you know people reach a certain level and then they just you know they start getting followers and they start getting adored and you know they start getting you know some of the material benefits of of rising up to higher level spirituality, you know, in a, a spiritual state, that they they get sucked into, you know, the egotistical aspect of it, right? And they lose themselves in it instead of you know staying disciplined and staying uh, with a sense of um, you know austerity, a sense of uh, moderation and balance. And so, yeah, this chosen one idea, all these things, indigo children, crystal children, there's some truth in it. But looking at it like, oh yeah, I'm a spiritual person, yeah, that's you're screwed then, right? I mean, you might see that you have something different, and you're you're more sensitive, you're more empathic, you're more evolved, you have a higher level of consciousness than other people, and it's there because there's a lot of dopes, there's a lot of remedial dopes out there that don't have the ability for abstract thought. So if you have a higher level of consciousness, and you have spiritual tendencies then you you know you're going to yeah you're going to feel like you're different and of course you're going to feel like you're better because you know you're on a higher level but that's the trap because you know you're not competing with these people like it isn't like oh you you're better than them because you've reached this level especially if it's something you did in your past that has created this this level and cap of spiritual capital that you have this talent that you have what are you going to do with the talent right and oftentimes people who have the talent, you know, don't evolve, um, you know, because they, you know, they just think, all right, I'm already on a higher level and that's enough and it's not, right? And, you know, there's just a whole new age, you know, the whole new age, um, a lot of the movements are based in ancient teachings and truths, but they're so egotistical and they're so watered down and, you know, goofy that it's, you know, it's the exact opposite. It becomes a, an exercise in egoism instead of becoming a spiritual person. But anyways, that's the chosen ones. I gotta go mock Joe Biden now and Donald Trump <laughs> onto the you know onto the uh, you know, the other part of the video. Okay, so this video was um, recommended to me. Maureen Joe yesterday. I didn't know this even happened. It's great. Make my day, pal. Biden announces plans for presidential debates. Um, it's really bad. And so let me, let's go over to this right here. Here's the, the video. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. So I'm not sure what the Wednesday is. I think this is a court reference. Um, this is Decina. Look at his, like he's just, look at this is, there's nobody here, right? There's nobody home here. Um, it's hilarious. And it's only 13 seconds long. And they edited it in a, you know, in the worst type of fashion. It's multiple clips. Like it wasn't, they put music behind it to cover up for his senility and his horrible speaking skills. Um, let's analyze this and then we'll go back to Morning Joe. Okay, so I'm in the editing process, and I didn't hear this when I was recording it, but now that I'm editing, it's louder. And um, it seems like they put a rap beat behind him. <laughs> like this is some kind of rap beef 
you know, Trump has been in rap, rap beast for years. And I think Biden's, you know, embracing it. I mean, he isn't because he doesn't know what the F he's doing, but his team is. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. Okay, so that was the first bit. Um, he did not lose those debates. Everybody thought that this guy, he was so senile, and he had done so poorly in the Democratic debates. Remember, they were laughing at him, and he had multiple gaffes. And he was, you know, I, I've covered this. I've shown you these things before in the Democratic debate. So everyone thought that Trump, who was kind of an aggressive debater, would destroy Biden, and he didn't. So it wasn't a, he Biden won because everyone thought he was so senile that he was he would underperform. And it wasn't a disaster. So in that sense, he won because of the low expectations. Like he won because he didn't, you know, poop his diaper on stage at least we didn't know about it right like it was <laughs> you know like he he it was coherent enough that like he didn't you know act as as one of his se senior moments that he often had back then of course it's worse now then he says since then he hadn't shown up for debate so both biden and trump chose not to debate because biden should have debated kennedy kennedy was a legitimate challenge to his presidency to to his democratic nomination but they squeezed kennedy out and i'm not a kennedy supporter but that's what they did right they didn't allow kennedy to even run so kennedy had to run as an independent right um and so you know he's saying donald didn't show up for a debate because donald didn't have to in terms of the republican nomination he didn't have to debate and debate would have you know maybe it would have elevated some of these other candidates. So it, just in terms of being smart, it was stupid to debate for both of them. Don't debate it. Don't debate if you don't have to. Right. So like, that's a, that's a lie. And you know, but he just sucks at his delivery. Right. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Yeah. Um, he's acting like it, like he doesn't. Of course he does because you're showing signs of senility. And so is Trump. Like, Trump is definitely not, you know, as sharp as he was. Uh, but, you know, of course he does. Like, everyone wants to see that because of the... You know, he's lost it, right? Well, make my day, pal. I'll okay, so... The make my day, pal... Um, make my day is a reference to a Clint Eastwood movie called Dirty Harry. Which, you know, I'm, I'm almost 60... And I saw that movie when I was a kid, and it was on TV as a rerun. And so that movie was like, you know, in the 1960s, 1970s. Make my day. And so, you know, Clint Eastwood took a gun, and he said, make my day, punk. <laughs> and there was a, you know, a, 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 a evildoer, a baddie, a criminal, a thug. And Clint Eastwood had a three fifty seven Magnum, which has a big, large bullet in it. And he was just shooting guys instead of giving them a fair trial. And he was just, you know, um, he went rogue as a cop. It was one of the original going rogue as a cop, like a cops when they just, they don't follow the rules and they just take the law into their own hands and they become executioners, right? There's another movie called, um, uh, whatever it was, Death Wish. And so, um, they, these movies started a trend of movies that we see now all the time and there was a scene where the guy was there was a thug and he Clint Eastwood had shot him already and the guy had a gun he wanted the guy to go for a gun so he could shoot him right and I think he shot him anyway the guy didn't go for the gun but he shot him anyway so make my day is an old reference is what I'm saying it's like the malarkey tour right make my day pal and he's some kind of a, a tough guy I'll even do it twice. Twice he'll do it. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Okay, so the free on Wednesdays is that Trump's trial, they are there's no court on Wednesdays. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And so he's free on Wednesdays because of his hush money trial, which Trump is going to win that most likely. I mean, they're not going to. I'd be shocked if Trump ends up in jail anyway, but... That's a lame, you know, that's the whole thing is lame. Not that Trump didn't do it. He totally did. He's a scumbag. He totally banked Stormy Daniels and he totally told, he, he totally told 
Cohen to pay off Stormy Daniels because that was Cohen's job. He was a fixer for Trump, right? His job was to do things like that. And he paid uh, Stormy Daniels off with his own money. So it would look like, um, you know, that it came from him. But why would he pay off Stormy Daniels at the goodness of his heart? It's like $120,000, $160,000. You know, like Cohen is that generous. He's just helping out Trump, right? No, Trump, you know, he's doing it for Trump. It's just silly to even think anything otherwise. But they don't have the evidence to convict him. And it's a lame, you know, with all the corruption and depravity, it's just, you know, one of many things. And Joe Biden's the worst mocker because that's not even mockery. But they have a merch. They've merged out uh, free on Wednesday T-shirts now. Joe Biden has as mocking Trump as a fundraiser so people can wear those shirts. Imagine how lame a person would be if they would wear a Joe Biden shirt that said free on Wednesday for a Trump trial. Like how what kind of life are you living? <laughs> You're like the lowest form of like human being. Okay, so let's get back to the original video here. So Fox News and Trump's people are saying that it's rigged because one debate's on ABC and the other one's on, I think, CNN. But neither one is, they wouldn't debate on Fox, and, you know, Fox isn't even really all that supportive of Trump. They're just pretending. You know, they sold Trump out before. And so this idea that this debates are rigged, I guess there's no audience. You know, it, it plays to Joe Biden being uh they all know he's senile because he says it here look i'm not a young guy um when you go to his youtube channel this is the video that they put up there yeah you're it's not even not that you're a young guy you are old you're old by any standard because the average age of death you've surpassed it the average of age of death is like 78 and he's 80 and he'll be 84 by the time he leaves his second term, he'd be 84. So he's really old, right? And he's not a young 84. Like, he's showed signs of senility for about eight years. Like, he's he's been breaking down mentally for about eight years. He's not sharp. Like, he's, you know, the gaffes and the, all of it. That's no secret. That's no secret. People know my age. It's no secret. People know. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, you guys. Here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. Because I have experience, right? I have experience being a plagiarizer and a sniffer and a snoozler and a corrupt politician and a liar and a, you know, and a, you know, all the things that you see me doing on a regular basis. I led the country through the COVID crisis. No, oh my God, you're saying that? Are you seriously claiming that? Now it's coming out that it's a complete failure. And we knew it at the time. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. In the world, we got the strongest economy. That's the law that lowers prescription drug prices. No Cap way. He knows how to do it. Since them to $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. Look at him. He failed. He got it done. Got it done. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald this needs a lot of work for an old guy. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people. Oh, well, you do? That's in your son, in your crackhead son, and, you know, your bank accounts and the houses that you have that you shouldn't have because you've made money so that aren't a part of your job right like he's got all these houses he's got like 20 million dollars of assets and more than that that he does he wouldn't have accumulated right we saw this with um and it's the republicans and the democrats this isn't a, a just a joe biden thing but we saw this with um diane feinstein right she was making three hundred thousand dollars a year and she had a hundred million dollars of assets in a private jet right <laughs> Like, that's when there's corruption, and they're all corrupt. You know, Biden isn't the only one. Trump and his family took billions of dollars from the Saudis. You know, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and his daughter, Ivanka, and the Trump fam family got billions of dollars, $2 billion of uh, investment from the Saudis, right? They all used the White House to, uh, or just politicians in general, used their political um, power to 
get paid right by you know third parties that aren't part of their job so while I was editing this editing this I was reading some of my messages from Instagram and one of my viewers sent me this clip from John Stewart I can't use all of it because Comedy Central you know Viacom sucks at copyright but he's saying the exact same thing here about insider information U.S. Senator, you can enrich yourself in so many different, let's call them, legal ways. For instance, the stock market. Members of Congress's stock portfolios consistently beat the S&P 500. The average hedge fund was beating the market at 7%. The study found that the average U.S. Senator was beating the stock market by 12%. The average U.S. senator. And if you think it's because the average U.S. senator is just so smart, this is the average U.S. senator. So Joe Biden was a senator. So he's a part of this, obviously, right? How do they do it? Well, the secret is a shrewd understanding of the intricate interconnectivity of global markets. I'm kidding. They have inside information. <laughs> then they showed a bunch of clips of senators who used inside information to make more bank on the stock market, stock market, right? So, you know, they have more money than they should, right? They make whatever money, two, three hundred thousand dollars in their jobs, whatever it is, president makes four or something. And they have, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or twenty million dollars or whatever it is in assets, then you know they're corrupt. Like they, they need to prove where that money came from, you know, but they don't have to. And so they're allowed to get rich on it. And, you know, the stock market, well, they say, I just was lucky. Of course you're lucky, right? Because, you know, you have inside information, which is a crime, you know, insider trading. And some of the examples in this clip, I'm not going to show you the rest of it, are a law that was passed about Boeing. And the wife of the guy who passed it was on the committee, sold Boeing stock. Some guy was on a committee about how bad COVID was going to be, sold all his stocks, things like that, right? where there's just blatant insider trading. And so Joe Biden was a part of that, just like they all are. They're all corrupt. Trump, Biden, this is why they do it, right? They want to get paid. And that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. I'm Joe Biden. I'm Joe Biden. Breaking news here on... Breaking news. Good morning, Joe. President Biden laying out his terms for participating in the presidential debates well, this fall. And, and, and the breaking news is they're not going to go the commission route. Donald Trump has already said in the past he's not going to go the commission route. Trump has said he'd debate Biden anytime, any place. Mm -hmm. It looks like Joe Biden has taken him up on that. Let's see. Look, 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 look at Mika. Look, look, look how awesome this is. What the president's saying. Look at, look at him come in together to watch that. That's a great moment. They're here they are here, then they're going to come together. Watch their heads come together here. Anytime, any place. Mm -hmm. It looks like Joe Biden has taken him up on that. Let's see the, what the president's saying. <laughs> That's a great moment there. Kaboom. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. Since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. oh my God. That's been subtle about oh, that round. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, oh, wow. Whoa. Oh. Okay, so that's pathetic. That is so, 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 like, you know, embarrassing for these people. Your guy is senile, and he was not, he was a dud before that. He was a guy who lost three presidential uh, attempts, bids at becoming the nomination, the nominee for the Democratic Party. The first one, because he plagiarized. He was a joke. He was a gaff magnet. CNN did a whole, you know, hit piece on him when he was running against Hillary Clinton, like he's a known entity. So this is what Joe Biden was known as before. This is in 2015 from CNN. Here it is. President Joe Biden's presidential candidacy questioned after gaffes. It's nine years ago, 1.1 million views it got, right? This is Brianna Kaler, who is still working at CNN. And CNN did this hit piece, and so did all these other people. John Stewart, David Letterman, they show you here. Like all these other comedians, all these people, were trying to get Joe Biden not to run for president because they wanted Hillary. And they admitted all these things about Joe Biden 
in 2015. Vice President Biden in the key primary state of New Hampshire today. Much of the country's future will depend on the policies we choose in the next two. And you can see how better he was then, right? Like he was sharper then, and they didn't want him then. For six years. After recent travels to the early contest states of Iowa and South Carolina. But Biden's latest gaffes are stealing the spotlight away from speculation about his presidential aspirations. For their trust. Like his strange hold on Defense Secretary. So they, they got him here, right? Ash Carter's wife, Stephanie. And this claim about Somali immigrants in his hometown of Wilmington, Delaware. So they got him for being a groper, right? And it, the groping's much worse because. You know, there's these videos on, um, you know, the uh, whatever it is, the, the public, uh, you know, political channel. C-SPAN, right? C-SPAN covered him going and um, swearing in because he was vice president. He swore in all the senators. And he's glomming onto their wives and kids, smelling them, kissing them, groping them, snoozling them, you know, all these things. And he's doing it because he's the master of ceremonies. It's a big day for the families. And he goes in there and he just gloms onto him. I showed you multiple clips of this thing. And, like, he's known for that, right? So much so that John Stewart at The Daily Show did a hit piece on him being a groper. Called him a, the, you know, the, um, the audacity of grope or whatever uh, Obama's book was at that time. And so they all knew about it, right? Delaware. It's a large, mo very identifiable Somali community. There's an awful lot of driving cabs, uh, and uh, and our friends of mine, for real. I'm not I'm not being solicitous. I'm being serious. And it turns out factually incorrect. So they're calling him a liar. Fifteen Somalis live in the entire state, according to the Census Bureau, and Wilmington cab drivers told CNN they knew of no Somalis driving taxis. No one is asked to respond to every time Joe Biden says something, and he says something every day that. Uh, that people should be responding to. Marco Rubio, who is considering a run for president, and other Republicans are incensed. And on late night TV, Biden has become a punchline. Ever heard of a second to second lady? The missteps are nothing new. Over the years, Biden. And so then, you know, John Stewart did this audacity of grope. So the comedians were slamming him for being a groper. Biden's become known for them. He's taken criticism for some, like this one, talking to a largely African-American audience about Mitt Romney in 2012. They're going to put you all back in chains. But often... You know, what kind of thing is that to say? His handsiness and comments... No dates to 30. ...are likened to those of a crazy but lovable uncle. But no, not that. Don't come on. He's a groper. He's a creep. As they veer toward the more bizarre variety, it's raising questions about appropriate behavior for someone eyeing the White House. And with Biden a distant second to Hillary Clinton in polls of Democratic hopefuls, suggestions that Biden isn't a serious contender. Judging by his joke last night at a Black History Month event, maybe even Biden realizes that. I'm going to be in that room if anybody wants to photograph. I would not blame you if you didn't. Uh, okay, so... They didn't want this guy. They wanted Hillary. And so they told the truth about what they knew about this guy. You know, they still, I mean, they didn't go in as hard as they could. But they knew. Everyone knew. This guy's a plagiarizer, a, a corrupt politician, a, a dope, a, a gaff magnet, a liar, you know, a groper, a snoozler. I mean, all these things. Like, that's what this guy was. They knew it, and he was much better then. You see, he's much sharper. He's much younger. He's much... His mind is working better. And so they ignored all these things purposefully. It's the day, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Oh, oh wow. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh. Nothing subtle about oh, that, oh, Rev. Yeah. Uh, like how you sell yourself out as a person. Like these people know, know the guy's senile. They've been carrying water for this guy. I mean, just how embarrassing, right? Yeah, I know you hate Donald Trump, but my God. That, that, that was straight down the middle. Forget straight what? down the middle. Who doesn't know that's when the court is in recess. That's when the court is in recess. Right, yeah, exa that's exactly. Just, just so, sure so Jonathan, walk us through this. So, so. Walk us through this 14-second video. Explain to us the, the power of this man, this great man. 
Oh, they, 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 they've said no to the, the Presidential Debate Commission, which is something that Donald Trump had said in the past he was going to say no to. Correct. Trump has said he'd debate him any time, any place. Biden's now said, we're not going by those rules anymore. We'll debate you. Uh, two times. June and September are the months that the, the, the Biden campaign is putting forth. They'll have to come to agreement on the actual dates. You're right. We should remember that both in 2016 and 2020, Trump and his campaign savaged the debate commission. They basically said, we're not going to do that this time around. We should also underscore Donald Trump refused to participate in any Republican primary debates. He would not be part of that. Yeah, which is smart politically. Say that that's smart politically because he's now the nominee. So it isn't like he, you know, was being a coward like just admit that that's the smart move just like it was smart for biden not to acknowledge kennedy as a candidate he is now taken to truth social and in his media appearance saying i'll debate joe biden whenever he wants this is the biden campaign saying look we are going to debate i was talking to senior advisors the last couple of days there was never a suggestion they were going to duck the debates but now they're trying to come up with terms looks like june and september right. ahead of early voting in some states and john, I, I, john like Island, they've, uh, they, uh, again they've also said we're not going to do debates after early voting's already begun first of all but secondly they said to the presidential commission one of the reasons they're not doing it is you don't play by the rules. You let this guy come with COVID because you were afraid to test him and right. his family? Like, that's an absolute joke. That's an absolute joke. It's an absolute joke, you big, big, big joke. And also, we... All right, so this is, you know, embarrassing. So Trump has gone kind of, you know, he's, now he's going full in on Biden as well. I've been with him for a long time. When a politician comes out with a policy... And then they run in an election and they go back and say what they have to say to get elected. They always go back to that original policy. And you know what this guy's policies are. They are bad. They are really bad. And the funny thing and the sad thing is he really never changed. He goes through, like, who the hell would keep an open border? Because I think it's killing him in the election. Now, I may be wrong. Maybe this is a great political thing to have millions of prisoners and mental institution people come in maybe it's a good thing <laughs> these third world countries have all these mental institutions and they're just letting the their patients out like what is he talking <laughs> you know these poor people are immigrating here we're formerly in mental institutions maybe i don't understand maybe we all don't is there anything good about that politically is there anything good about high mortgage rates and high taxes yeah it's keeping the inflation down the high mortgage rates are keeping inflation to a reasonable level because that's they're doing that purposely because land has real value and money doesn't. And when inflation goes up, you can see it in commodities and gold and commodities and land. And so the the housing market was going to go to where you know houses were going to be cheap houses were going to be worth millions of dollars. And it would show you that the dollar's worth nothing, which is the true state of inflation. So that's why they're doing that. They're trying to keep you from seeing how inflated the dollar actually is. That's what that's all about. Your taxes are going to go up four times if this lunatic is elected. It's going to go up four times. And by the way, I have to say this. I have great respect for the office of the presidency. Yeah, no, you don't. That was your saving grace. That's what, that was my favorite thing about the Trump presidency. He had no respect for the presidential office. And he was tweeting in these like rap beefs we had with celebrities and other people at two in the morning. Like this is what drove the Democrats crazy that he wasn't acting like a president. That was what was great about it. His one saving grace, you know, he completely torpedoed his credibility by Operation Warp Speed and, and getting worked on COVID and what he did post election and, you know, how he got worked up by all those things. You know, he sucks. I mean, he failed. But what was great about his presidency is he had no respect for the office of the presidency. I never used to talk about Biden this way until he did something that you can't do. He indicted a very popular president. I mean, who, is, I, who is that popular president? He was very popular. I got more votes than any other president. You. He indicted you. <laughs> in history. You know that. I got more votes than any other sitting president in history. You, you were trashing him from day one, and you said he wasn't even the legitimate president. On made-up charges and nonsense, you see what's going on, all nonsense. They've got local DAs doing All right, so these, you know, Trump's 
starting to go scorched earth there. At some point, he calls him a total moron. And, you know, I mean, the debate could be entertaining. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, this is confirmation for the left-right paradigm and everything that we um, believe, you know, real truthers. You know, again, I'm not... A truther is just a silly kind of whatever, but people who are truth seekers and looking for, you know, more than just something to appease your ego. Like, if you're looking for something to validate your worldview and you're not looking to face the, the harsh truth of your reality and your situation is that these are two clowns. And, you know, Donald Trump was a clown on TV. Like, I like The Apprentice. I like Donald Trump as a character. He was a clown on TV. Joe Biden was a, you know, a lifetime politician who was known for do, for being a gaff magnet. No one took him seriously. No one ever thought the guy would be president. And that's back when he was sharp. They were both smart, you know, above average intelligence you know, they were smarter than the average person, but that's not saying much. But neither one of them was brilliant. And they were both big egos, and they said stupid stuff. Like Trump, you know, was getting himself in trouble a lot. It didn't matter because he was a billionaire. But he also, you know, was kind of a dick about his business practices. He screwed over vendors and poor people and hardworking people. And he was really cheap and, you know, just a petty and uh, like all these things involved in lots and lots of lawsuits oftentimes where he had the advantage because he had more money as uh, you know he, he could use his corporations to pay for his lawyers and things against you know private citizens and he was always just being it you know he's he sucks and joe biden was a plagiarizer and as a politician he was known as being you know one of the the more clown you know bigger sort of clowns in a in a sea full of clowns joe biden stood out even in their degraded positions of, you know, billionaire businessmen and um, lifelong federal politicians, they were kind of the, the lower level, character-wise and, and the rest of it. And goofy, you know, just like they're, you know, sometimes you're laughing at them, sometimes you're laughing with them, mostly you're laughing at them kind of thing, right? And so now they got old, and neither one of them should ever be considered a good leader or, a, you know, possible president and you know they don't present very well or presidential joe biden is clearly senile they all know it and they, they propped him up anyway and trump is starting to deteriorate and he's angry and bitter about what happened he just cares about trump they're both selfish you know trump is more obviously selfish and narcissistic but they both are and they both got questionable behavior around women biden has around women and kids and they're just creepy so these are your two guys. Like this is a time we're in a desperate situation. America is divided. World three, world world three is, you know, happening. Stuff in Israel, Middle East, stuff with Russia, China. You know, it's coming to a head, right? There's prophecies. People are degraded. The youth is, you know, useless and, you know, not for. I mean, mostly not for any fault of their own. They're just uh, each generation gets more degraded, and we need somebody to. You know, you would need a great leader just to, I don't know, there's no solving or fixing this system, but not these guys, right? These guys aren't, neither one of them has the potential to do anything. They're not great men. You need a great person here. You need somebody who's a substantial person, and neither one of these guys is great. They're clowns, right? You got a couple of clowns, the media full of clowns, and, you know, everything degrading around you, with each generation getting weaker and more entitled, more incompetent. Morality is broken down. And this is what you have, right? Like, that's the reality of being like a truther, that there is no way out of this thing. We have a system that's demonic and is goes against the will of God on so many different levels. And selfishness and hedonism and materiality and a lack of spiritual connection. The family's broken down. And so there's only really one solution. That's a system that we're 100% uh, dependent on to collapse. And not many people have the ability to come up with a plan b and execute it right and you, know, you almost have to be really lucky in, in, in terms of who your neighbors are and you know people like that you need to have lots of quality people around you just to you know uh, conceive of the idea of surviving this thing right so it's confirmation for us you know like just watching this stuff because it's so bad you know they're so childish and they're so like lame and the people covering this and all the people who believe in these two guys and 
I mean, it's just an embarrassment. This whole thing is an embarrassment. And the debate is, is going to be that, right? Like, people will be re- rooting for Trump to crush Biden more, more often than not in the truth community. But remember, Trump is going to hand Israel the keys, the, the keys to the kingdom. And, you know, he got worked on Operation Warp Speed, and he's already, you know, he just sucks. And he's, he's going to suck because, you know, it's not just what Trump does. It's what the left will get away with when Trump becomes president again. It'll be the downfall of our civilization. And they'll be pushing for the idea that total censorship and anybody who's a Trumper doesn't have a right to vote or doesn't have a right to have a voice because you've made such a horrible decision. I mean, that's where it's coming. That's what it's coming to. And the left holds all the power in the media and social media and corporate media and all these things. The corporate corporations, they hold the money power. And so they're the ones who are going to execute whatever policies that they impose for a Trump presidency, right? There'll be punishment for Americans for making Trump the president. I mean, that could be, you know, the plan here. We'll see what happens. But either way, it's all it's all lined up for that. You know, you don't have, uh, there's no happy ending either way here. There's no happy ending for anybody. There's no, you know, there's no solution here. There's there's a problem and plenty of problems, and there's no solutions. There's no real solutions, right? Just, you know, more of the same, uh, the collapse of our civilization. You got the chosen ones. So. <laughs> but, you know, the chosen ones are coming. You know, so this is what has to happen. I've talked about this before in terms of the collapse of this civilization, the reduction of population, and then more spiritual people, you know, getting the, you know, what we did wrong collectively, feeling, you know, like we need to redeem ourselves, connecting to God and changing our whole orientation to the world. And that's going to take a couple hundred years. I mean, it will take, you know, a long period of time for that kind of transformation and whatever's left over in terms of civilization and all the rest of it. You know, we'll see how the events unfold. But for something better to come, you know, one door closes, another door opens. For something better to come, well, then there's, you know, this is what has to happen. Like, there has to be a collapse of this civilization, giving birth to something better. And where you have a society full of saints, people who are embracing our true potential. If you look at the highly developed spiritual people of the past, and you think about a society of just those types of people, then it would be totally different. You know, everyone would be working for God and working for each other, service-oriented, no selfishness, no, you know, I mean, egotistical behaviors, just, you know, working humbly for the betterment of people and the planet, doing the right thing, following their hearts, learning to let God guide them from within, making the right decisions, you know, never embracing, you know, uh, selfish, egotistical um, pathways and, you know, points of view and things like this, but just getting it and doing the right thing and working to be better, working to be, you know, to change themselves and evolve spiritually and become more and more like that, right? Starting off like that with an orientation of service and sacrificing for the greater good, sacrificing for God, all these things. You know, in terms of your own egotistical, uh, even your own personal comforts and things like that, right? And so those type of people would, you know, would have a civilization that would reflect the, you know, the beauty and the the inner beauty and the inner connection to the divinity within them. And so that's the solution. Like, people can do that. Like, we all flirt with that. You know, a long time ago, I worked at a treatment center with these kids who were like little sex offenders, and they were the worst of the worst. Most of these kids were going to end up in prison or dead or, you know, addicted to drugs. You know, criminal life, institutionalized life, horrible behaviors, really poor self-esteem. And, you know, they were acting out all the time. And we had these trainings, and a guy who worked with these, you know, these facilities came in and said, you know, I could get all your kids to behave for, like, one day. And there were people like, well, how do you do that? He goes, well, I just offer them all $10,000 a piece or $1,000 a piece or whatever, probably even 100 would do it, to just behave, and they could do it, right? And he was giving an example, like, with the right incentive, people can behave, at least for short periods of time. And you would see that. Like, these are kids who are, like, the worst of the worst, the dregs of the society. You know, they've engaged in horrific behaviors already at a young age. And they could have moments of empathy, moments of, you know, being selfless, moments of good behavior, right? You know, the worst people can exhibit these types of tendencies. You'll see it in your own life. There'll be moments even the worst people in your life will rise up and, you know, be better for a short period of time. 
And then there are people who are saints that really go to high levels of spiritual attainment. And so human beings have the potential to be better. We just choose not to, right? We choose the lower constantly. And as long as that's the case, then we're on a path to destruction. And if it turns around, it turns around, you know, but it's each person doing it for the betterment of not only themselves, but it's what your soul wants you to do. It's your true purpose here. And it's, you know, just what should happen. But, you know, people have, have not cared about that in the past. Anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano, definitely important for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.